Maynard Dixon was really two people. In one way, he was very comfortable in this sort of bohemian atmosphere of San Francisco, reveled in the idea that people looked up to him as, as a great artist. But he was also somebody who could shuck the suit and go out and, and live with the Native American or cowboys and adapt very quickly to their life. So in one way, he was a bohemian westerner, and the other way, he was a western bohemian. He cut quite a figure in San Francisco, going down the street with with this cane, and the cowboy boots made this sound on the pavement. He was a cowboy. He was an Indian spiritually, in his knowledge of them, and his studio, big bison skull, Navajo blankets, Indian pots, terrific. Dixon deeply disdained the commercial work he was doing. He was hailed as one of the top illustrators in the golden age of illustration, but he was often pressured to sweeten his efforts with falsely romantic and sensational inventions. I'm being paid to lie about the West, he bitterly complained in a letter to Lummis. During his four years in New York, he created only one work of enduring value to him. That was his daughter, Constance, who was born in 1910. By then, Dixon had had enough of the East. The strain on his marriage was serious, and so was the strain on his integrity. The money wasn't worth it. He'd take his chances back where straight talk and a true picture still meant a little something. On their way to San Francisco, the train made a brief stop in Green River, Wyoming. There was just enough time to make a quick sketch. Dixon grabbed a pad, stepped out on the platform, and began to draw. Here in the West, he was back where he belonged. 